Here is another in NBC's great parade of new shows. Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. You know, I saw something the other day that's as typical of New York as the Empire State Building. I was walking down 2nd Avenue when I spotted some kids around the fire hydrant. They had turned it on and the whole gang was splashing around, keeping cool. They'd done something else, too. They'd found a barrel... And I suddenly remembered when I used to play in the gutter with the same kind of barrel. It's open at both ends, and when it's held over the gushing hydrant, it acts like a big hose, and a lot of passing New Yorkers can end up pretty wet. I stopped and watched, and just like always, one of New York's finest showed up and the kids scattered. He turned off the water, and the fun was over. Oh, but not for long. Somebody was sure to give the kids a monkey ranch, and ten minutes after the cop had disappeared, the street would be flooded again. Yeah, a kid can have a lot of fun, even in a big city. But it's unfortunate that every once in a while there's a boy who forgets to have fun and heads for trouble. Like a case I got mixed up in not long ago. It all started in a candy store under the L on 9th Avenue. I'm just closing up, boys. We want to talk to you, Pop. I told you I was closing up. Come back tomorrow and we can talk then. Eddie said he wanted to talk to you, Pop. You better listen. Yeah, what is this? You kids get out of my store. You want to buy something, you come back tomorrow. You ain't been making enough on your number sales. We come to see why not. Oh, so that's it. First, they threaten to beat me up unless I sell the numbers. Then they get sore because I ain't selling enough and send young hoodlums to see that I do. Well, you go tell your boss that I'm through selling numbers to poor people who think they can get rich quick. You tell your boss if he don't like it, I'm going to the police. You tell your boss that. Sure, we'll tell him. But he wants us to tell you something. I don't want to hear nothing from you bunch of no goods. Now you get out of here. Oh, no, that ain't nice. Is it, Jim? No, that ain't nice at all. I told you to get out. If you don't, I'll call a cop. You ain't calling anybody, Pop. Yeah. What are you doing? You get away. Help, please. No, no, please, help. Shut up. Okay, Jim, make him shut up. Please, I'm an old man. Yeah, yeah, sure you are, Pop, but old guys like you need exercise. <laughs> Think he's had enough, eh? Yeah, grab some of them cigarettes and cigars off the counter. Yeah, sure. Hey, we better get out of here. Maybe somebody heard him yelling. Okay, grab me a box of candy, too. I got a date with Nancy tonight. I'll grab a couple. I got a date, too. Let's go. Down this alley. Yeah. Okay, okay, slow it down. Right. Let's get over to 27th Street. Okay. Come on, Mr. Parrish wants to see us. Right. Uh, hey, Ed. Yeah? You go up to see your brother today? Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing all right. Ain't he scared or nothing? <laughs> What's the matter, Eddie? Oh! Hey, what did I say? What did I say, huh? I told you once not to say nothing about my brother. I was just asking. I didn't say nothing, hey? You asked if he was scared, didn't you? Okay, okay. Well, he ain't scared. He's a big shot. He wasn't scared of the guy knocked off by the cops or nothing else, see? Not even a hot seat. <laughs> hey, that's the cop who spotted us. Come on. Diamond Detective Agency, we filter the choke on the way to your throat. Oh, for Pete's sake, Diamond, aren't you ever serious? Well, Lieutenant Levinson, what's the matter with you? Did someone swipe one of your ulcers? Now, stop that. I wouldn't call you unless it was something important. I know. You're losing Sergeant Otis to Barnum and Bailey. You stop that. Ringling Brothers? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not. What other sideshow could boast a pointed head with a gray suede face? Diamond, I have an important message for you, so for the sake of my sour stomach, act like a normal human being for five minutes. Uh, it's sure to be a strain, but go ahead. Bill Garrett wants to see you. Bill Garrett? Yes. He goes to the electric chair tonight at 8 o'clock, and he wants to see you. Well, he can't sit in my lap. I don't like the type any more than you do. He's going to die, so why the cracks? The guy he shot had a wife and two kids. Maybe you want me to make cracks about them? All right, all right, but will you see him? It's his last request. All right, sure. 
I'll call the warden and tell him you'll be up. Well, uh, you be sure and put in the call. If Otis does it, the warden will get so confused they'll turn Garrett loose and toast me. Well, in my business, you get a lot of screaming. But you never know where they'll lead, so if you've got that nervous, got to get in trouble feeling, you follow it up. I put in a call to my lovely redhead, Helen Asher, and told her I'd be a little late, but to keep the bottle spinning anyway. Then I took off for Sing Sing. Hello, Garrett. Hello, Simon. I'm glad you got here. Wouldn't miss it. Neither would I unless I could help it. Look, Garrett, I'm busy and you're on a tight schedule. Now, what's on your mind? Well, it's like this, Rick. The name's Diamond. Okay. I know you hate guys like me, but I ain't ashamed of what I've done. That's the way I lived. That's the way I'm going to go out. Now, if you want someone to listen to you feel sorry for yourself, you'll be along in a few minutes before eight. Yeah, maybe I better forget it. You ain't got no use for nothing. I got use for everything that doesn't include guys like you. There's no middle with me, Garrett. It's got to be right or wrong. And uh, right keeps you out of trouble, huh? Well, not always. But it helps people to live together. Okay. I guess you know I got a kid brother. Yeah. He's going on 17, and it looks like the family's going to have another guy for you to hate. What do you want me to do? He thinks I'm a big shot. I want you to convince him I'm not. Oh? What's he done? I don't know, but he's just like I was when I was that age. Tough, wise guy. He wants to be just like me. Hmm. Has he been up here to see you? Yeah, but that don't change his mind. Just makes him madder at the world. I ain't getting soft, see, but he's a great little guy, and he's smart. A lot smarter than I was. It's just going to take someone to show him which foot to get off on. Ah, okay, okay. What's his first name and where can I find him? His name's Eddie. He's got a club they call the Panthers. Uh, you know the kind. Yeah, with me it was the Brownies. It's over on 26th Street and he's got a girl he told me about. Her name's Nancy Hyde. She lives with a rand over 37th Street. Okay, I'll see what happens. He's tough. Oh, lots of guys are tough, Garrett. Sometimes if they get a break, they turn out to be so tough, they even get to be all American. Hey, I'd like that. I'd like to see the kid get to be all American. That might be a little difficult, but you never know. Maybe they've got television down there. The kid's around here, boss. Okay, tell him to come in. Okay, Eddie, go on in. Thanks, muscle man. Hiya, Mr. Parrish. Hello, Eddie. We took care of old man Thompson like you said. Good, good. You, uh, beat him up bad? Bad enough. Yeah, yeah, we really waked him over. We got Shut up, I'll do the talking. What do you think's running this mob anyway? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Get a load of that, Bart. We got a big shot. Yeah, yeah. You run your bunch pretty good, don't you, Eddie? I run the whole club. The Panthers got 23 members now. You hear that, Bart? 23 members and Eddie's the big boss. <laughs> I like that. I like you, Eddie. You and me and the 23 Panthers is going to go a long way. Well, that's something I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Parrish. We're getting awful tired of just beating up, guys. We want to start doing something big, like knocking over gas stations or something. <laughs> so you want to start doing something big, huh? Like knocking over gas stations, huh? Yeah. Well, you got a lot to learn, Eddie. Well, I've been doing all right, ain't I? Well, you're going to do a lot better. How would you and the Panthers like to start making some really big cash? Hey, we'd like that. Shut up. We... <laughs> well, what does the boss say? The boss says great. What do we do? It's a cinch. Bart, go out in front and see that we ain't disturbed. Yeah, sure thing, boss. Bart carries a gun, don't he, Mr. Parrish? Yeah, Eddie. He carries a big one. I'm going to carry one someday. Sure you are. You're going to be a big shot. But you gotta learn first. You gotta start from the bottom to be a big shot. Now, here's the pitch. You get your gang together and explain the Harry says we swipe cars, so we swipe cars. I don't know, Ed. Beating up guys is one thing, but swiping cars is pretty dangerous. Look, it's a cinch. We go out in the road someplace, and one of us thumbs a ride. Yeah. When the car stops, we all jump in. Later on, we knock the guy over the skull and take the car. Oh, stealing cars is a tough ride. If you get caught, but we don't get caught, see? If we catch a stoop out in the road someplace, it'll take him a long time to get to a phone. We drive the car to Mr. Parrish's warehouse and collect 50 bucks. Easy. I don't know. You better know. 
You're in the gang, and that means you're in on it whether you like it or not. Okay, okay. You're the boss. Okay. They pull the first job tonight. The, the, I, I thought you had a date with Nancy. Oh, I got a date. I can break it. She does what I tell her. Yeah, but... Hey, what do you want? Yeah, this is a private club. I'm, uh, looking for Eddie Garrett. Who wants him? Nobody for a present, but I'm still looking for him. Well, beat it. You smell like a cop. You got a good nose. That's pretty close. Hey, just some... Shut up. We ain't seen any. Uh, yeah, that's right. We ain't seen him. Okay, but if you do, tell him I got a message from his brother. From my... From his brother? Yeah. Tell him that if you see him. Oh, oh wait a minute. I'm Eddie Garrett. Good for you. Proud of it? Oh, you're a wise guy, ain't you? I'll tell you later. Your brother says he thinks you're in trouble, are you? Trouble? <laughs> That's a hot one. What made him think that? He runs around with it. He says you think you're a big shot. Maybe I do. Then you're in trouble, Sonny. Oh, what are you talking to this guy for, Eddie? He talks crazy. Why don't we throw the bum out? How are you going to do it? Grow 12 feet? Oh, you're a pretty wise guy, you are. You wouldn't act so wise on the other end of a shiv. Shut up, Jim. Come on, get out of here. What about this wise guy, Ed? You want to be left alone with him? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but I'd still like to wake this wise guy over. <laughs> hey, hey, what's the idea? You tripped me. Ed, you see that? That wise guy tripped me. You're pretty clumsy, Sonny. Now beat it. No, wh why you... You hate him? Beat it. You're lucky you didn't pull that knife, Jim. You look pretty silly with a broken arm. Yeah. Well, okay, okay, wise guy. I'll see you again. Now, tell me what you want, and then you'll get out of here, too. Nice clubhouse you got. It's all right. It's, uh, six o'clock. So it's six o'clock. Doesn't it bother you? Two more hours, and your brother dies. So what? So he doesn't want you to end up the same way. Don't you worry about me, mister. Your brother's worried about you. He wants me to help you. How about it? I don't need no help. You're a copper. Guys like you that sent my brother to the chair. I'm not a cop, Eddie, but I used to be. You ain't a cop? No, but if I was just a plumber and I had the chance to put your brother away for a killing, I'd do it. Yeah, I thought so. You look like the type. You're still a copper and you're no good. Now go on, get out of here. I don't need no help from a lousy copper. I don't need no help from anybody. Hey, Eddie, hey. Oh, didn't know you was entertaining. This guy's just going. Come on in, boy. Let's go, Eddie. What do you mean, let's go? I want to talk to you. We'll go up to my place. I ain't going nowhere with a lousy copper. Copper? Yeah, yeah, he's been in here preaching to me. Better leave, Flatfoot. Come on, Eddie. No, I ain't going nowhere. You heard what the kid said. Now, look. Yeah? Well, well, well. Guns and everything. Like it? Goes bang, bang. Hey, hey, wait a minute, boss. I don't want no killing. Oh, don't worry, Eddie. I'm just going to put the Flatfoot to sleep. <clears throat> hey, you slugged him with the gun. Mr. Parrish wants to see you about tonight. Huh? Okay. He ain't dead, is he? No, no. I just tapped him a little one. Come on. Tap me a little one. <laughs> that was the biggest understatement of the year. He tapped me so little, my, help, my head felt like it was in sections. I lay there for a while trying to find the piece that did my thinking, and when I started coming out of it, it was like trying to open a beach umbrella in a 90-mile wind. I didn't know how long I'd been lying there, but when I finally opened my eyes, I I saw something that made the beating a welcome relief. Hey, look, Lieutenant. He's with us again. <laughs> oh, no. Shut up, Otis. Rick. Rick, how do you feel? Uh, I wish I was dead. Oh, now it can't be that bad. No. Well, you lie down here and look up at Otis. Makes you want to slash your wrist. Hey, he's riding me again. You're all right. Here, try to, try to sit up. Without my head... Oh, now, who beans you? A guy named Bart Lippett. He didn't know me, but I recognized him. Small-time muscle man works for Sam Patton. A lovely group. Say, how the devil did you find me? Well, we certainly weren't looking for you. We came down to pick up Bill Garrett's kid brother. Pick him up? What for? Your job's ho homicide. Yeah, he and another kid beat up an old storekeeper last night. The guy's in pretty serious condition. Oh, no. How serious, Walt? Well, the doctors say critical, but he does stand a chance. Hey, now, wait a minute. Where are you going? What time is it? Seven o'clock. Why? I got an hour to keep a promise. I hope that storekeeper doesn't die. If he does, Sing Sing will be building their electric chairs in tandem. Well, the law was after Eddie Garrett, and I'd promised his brother that I'd keep him out of trouble. 
If the storekeeper died, Eddie was sure to get life. But if he lived and I could make him give himself up, I'd stand a good chance of helping him. I remember that Garrett had said Eddie had a girl, so I took off to 37th Street in a hurry. Yes? Are, uh, are you Nancy Hyde? Why? Well, I, uh, I'm looking for Eddie. Oh, uh, well, I, I haven't seen him. Oh, well, you're a little nervous. Well, no, I'm just a little worried. About Eddie? Who are you? Oh, I know his brother. He wanted me to find Eddie. Oh, his brother. Well, I don't know where Eddie is, and you stay away from him. You, uh, don't approve of Eddie's brother? No, and I'm not afraid to say it. Eddie's a good boy, but he worships his big brother, and he thinks he's tough. So you can just go tell his brother that Eddie's not going to turn out like him. Not if I can help it. Oh, he's not if I can help it either. I am a private detective, Nancy. My name's Diamond. You said that Eddie's brother wants you to find Eddie. He does, but he wants to keep Eddie out of trouble as much as you do. Oh, well, honestly, Mr. Diamond, I don't know where Eddie is. He called me a little while ago and said that he might be able to come over late. And he didn't say where he was? No. Hmm. Well, if he does come, try to keep him here, and I'll get in touch with you later on. All right, Mr. Diamond. I went down the hall and back down the steps in a hurry. When I reached the street, I stopped and waited for a cab to come along. I took out a cigarette was just about to light it when I spotted a shadow ducking in behind the doorways and making its way up the street toward me. I slipped back in the building and waited. Hey, what is this? Take it easy, Eddie. Oh, the copper. Let me go. That storekeeper you beat up may die. I'm taking you down to the station. What? That's right. He's in a bad way. Now, come on. Let's go. I might have known it. But you said you wanted to help me. That's a laugh. This is the only way I can help you. Oh, sure. Well, if the law picks you up, you won't, have, won't stand a chance. You may even get shot. Well, I'll take my chances. Not tonight, you won't. Let me go. Let go of my arm. Now, look. I don't want to hurt you, so stop kicking. Yeah, this is swell, this is. Everybody wants to help me. My brother's going to the chair, and if that old guy dies, I'm going to prison. Please let me go. i just as soon get shot. Ain't got nothing to live for. Now, take it easy, kid. The old boy might not die. Then we can work something out. Ah! What was that? That's Nancy. That's Nancy. Let me go. Come on. I turned him loose, and we both went up the stairs three at a time. We reached the door, and I got that lousy feeling. The screams had stopped, and from the way she was yelling, it would take a lot to shut her up. Like dying. It's locked. Nancy. She don't answer. Look out. She ain't here. Now look in the other room. Nancy. Nancy. She ain't in here either. Hey, hey, what's the gun for? Get rid of the window, quick. What, what's the matter? That car driving off down there, you know it? Oh, why? Because I saw your girl being pushed in it. I couldn't take a shot because it might have hit her. He took it down the fire escape. Yeah. Eddie. Eddie, who would want to kidnap Nancy? I don't know. I don't know. You're working for Sam Parrish, aren't you? How did you know that? I recognized his muscle man just before he put me to sleep. I ain't saying nothing. Now look, you stupid little idiot. Aren't you worried about your girl? Yeah, sure I'm worried about her. What's that got to do with Mr. Parrish? Nothing, maybe. But if he heard that the law was looking for you, he might be afraid you'd talk. What were you and your gang doing for Parrish? I, I, I can't tell you. Okay, okay, then you're on your own. If the girl gets killed, they'll let you cry about it for the rest of your life and sing sing. I'm through trying to help you, Eddie. You're too far gone. You're no good. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Mr. Diamond, please. I'll tell you, I don't want Nancy hurt. Please, I, I don't know what to do. Well, first, try to take it easy. And then tell me what you were doing for Sam Parrish. Well, we used to beat up guys that wouldn't sell enough numbers. Mr. Parrish controls a lot of the numbers racket. We were supposed to start swiping cars. He was going to pay us 50 bucks a car. Oh, call him. Call him? Yeah. Here's the phone. But for Pete's sake, don't let on that you know anything's up. Okay. I want you to tell him that you've decided to give yourself up. Okay. If he's got Nancy, I'll kill him. You just be sure and tell him that you're going to give yourself up. He'll tell you whether he's got Nancy or not. Yeah. Mr. Parrish? Uh, Eddie, is that you? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Me and Bart have been looking all over town for you. The uh, cops are after you. I know. I'm going to give myself up. You what? Yeah, it's better this way. They might go easier on me if I do. Look, kid, you, you gotta stop talking like that. You're gonna be a big shot. You can't go turning yourself into the law. No, I'm gonna do it. Uh, you come down here and talk to me first. Uh, where are you? It's no good, Mr. Parrish. I'm leaving for the station right now. Eddie? Yeah? You ain't going nowhere unless you want to see your girlfriend scooped out of the East River. You have got her. Sure, I got her. So you get on down here. 
I just left her and she don't look so happy. She's with Bart and you know Bart. Why, you dirty no Bart, good grief, Bart. You get out of my office in 20 minutes or I'll call Bart and the little girl dies. Now get down here. Hello. Hello. He's got her, Mr. Diamond. I gotta get down there or he'll kill her. Where's his office? He don't have Nancy there. He told me she was with Bart. I, I gotta go. You do and he'll kill you. Then he'll do the same with the girl. You can't take the chance. What are we gonna do? I only got 20 minutes. Does Parrish have another office or a hideout? No, no. Wait a minute. Yes, he does. Sure, the warehouse. He told me about it this afternoon. We were supposed to take our stolen cars there. Okay. I'll call Lieutenant Levinson and tell him to meet us there. You think that's where they got Nancy? I hope so. 20 minutes isn't much time. I put in a call to Walt and briefed him in a hurry. Then Eddie and I took off at the warehouse. It was at the foot of 14th Street, and by the time we got there, we had only 10 minutes left. The building was as dark as a foggy grave and locked tight. We found a window in the basement and finally jimmied our way in. You all right, Eddie? Yeah, but I, I can't see nothing. Come on. That looks like some stairs. Maybe we guessed wrong. Hey, what was that? I don't know, but there was a jockey on it. Come on. Hey, look. There's a light. Yeah. A little office in the back. Now, you stay here. There might be some shooting. Uh -uh. If Bart's in there with Nancy, I want in on it. This is no time to argue. Now, back over against the wall. Gosh, I bumped into some boxes or something. Oh, shut up. Look. It's Bart. Hold still. Who's there? What are we going to do? He's got a gun. Answer him. Answer him? Yeah, quick. Come on, come on. Who's out there? Uh, it's uh, me, Bart, Eddie. Huh? What are you doing here? We've been looking all over for you. I'm on the lam. The cops are after me, so I remembered this place. Well, ain't that nice. The boss has been worrying about you. Come on back, Eddie. <laughs> Got a friend of yours here. Go on. I'm going to circle him. Uh, sure, sure, Bart. Uh, I'm coming. Come on over here where I can see you. Yeah. That's it. Okay, kid. Now, hold it right there. Hey, what's the idea? Well, the boss is afraid you'll do some talking if the cops pick you up, so I got orders to knock you off. Sorry, kid. You know how it is. Drop it, Bart. Hey, hey he wait. He said drop it. Oh, you, you love Duck, you... Eddie. <laughs> you got him. Yeah, thanks for the assist. Let's see if the girl's in the office. Yeah, they got a gag in the mouth. Nancy. <laughs> Oh, she's okay. There. Oh, Nancy, honey. Oh, Here, I'll get those ropes off you. Nan, I'm in some pretty bad trouble, but I swear if I get out of it, I'll go straight. Oh, you'll be all right, Eddie. I know you will. Oh, ain't that cozy. Look out, Eddie. Hold it right where you are. Well, things are really getting crowded. That's Parrish, Mr. Diamond. I guess. You shoot pretty good, Diamond. I saw you get Bart. I guess I'm going to have to pay you back for that. The law's on its way. So they find a more. Eddie! Oh, shoot, Nancy, please. Shoot me, but don't shoot Nancy. Here they come, Parrish. You seem pretty anxious, mister, so I'll let you have it first. No! No, you can't! Look out, Eddie! Oh, Eddie! You slob, Parrish! Oh, Eddie! Eddie, he's hurt, Mr. Diamond. Those Parrish, but his is permanent. Eddie. Eddie, where you hit? I think in his stomach. We'll get you to a hospital quick. You saved my scalp when you jumped in front of me. Thanks. How about Parrish? I paid him in full. What time is it? 8.35, Eddie. Oh. Funny, I don't feel so bad about my brother now that it's over. He'd probably be sore about me helping a cop. But, you know, I don't mind. Especially when it's a nice guy like you. <laughs> Walt busted in. They got Eddie to the hospital. Otis tripped over a pipe and broke his big toe, so they had to throw him in the wagon along with Eddie and his girl. Eddie recovered all right, and so did the storekeeper. He helped beat up. The kids all got two years, sentence suspended, because my lovely redhead, Helen Asher, convinced the judge that the boys would become much better citizens if they worked out their two years on her farm upstate milking the cows. Before Eddie left for the farm, Helen had him over to the house, and he brought his girlfriend. Well, we gotta be going, Mr. Diamond. I gotta catch a train. 
Thanks for the swell dinner, Miss Asher. It was my pleasure, Eddie. It was wonderful. Oh, Mr. Diamond. Yes, Nancy? Miss Asher was telling me that you sing. Oh, Miss Asher is sometimes afflicted with an extreme case of blabitis. Where? Hey, I'd like to hear you sing something before I take off. Would you, Mr. Diamond? Certainly he would. Do you want it after I tear out your pretty tongue at the lungs or before you, dear sweet little girl? Now, you mustn't talk that way in front of guests, Rick. They'll think we're married. Well, he's not as tough as he sounds. Now, come on, Mr. Diamond, give. Yeah, I'll give you a hit in the head. Come on, after Eddie hears me, uh, he may realize that crime does pay. It's on your pretty head. Just sing. Stop making like a prima donna. What do you want to hear? Oh, uh, something romantic. Oh, bless your little pointed head. You kids go sit on the sofa. Okay. Come on. Where are you now that I need you? Now that I want you so badly, I'm crying. Where are you? Where did fate lead you? Funny how I dreamed you'd still be standing by. Anyone? I had you at my beck and call. I called you any time at all. I guess I took you too much for granted. I never thought I'd lie awake and sigh. Where are you now that I need you? Now that I love you so madly, I could die. Oh, how was that, kids? Rick, look. Well, how do you like that? They're stealing our stuff. <laughs> Come on, Eddie, break it up now. You got to catch a train. Mm. Eddie. Mm. Nancy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Sheldon Leonard, William Tracy, Mary Shipp, Sidney Miller, and Bill Conrad. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by Richard Sandville. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective.